Jeremiah chapter 23. <clears throat> Woe to the shepherds destroying and gathering the sheep of my pasture, declares Yahuwah. Therefore thus said Yahuwah Elohim of Israel against the shepherds who feed my people. You have scattered my flock, driven them away, and have not tended them. See, I am punishing you for the evil of your deeds, declares Yahuwah. The shepherd, Yeshua says, I am the good shepherd. I come but for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He left the 99 for the one. What do you think all these parables that Yeshua is teaching in the Gospels are about? Therefore I shall gather the remnant of my flock, Yah's lost people, out of the lands where I have driven them, the diaspora, the dispersion, us, as well as these tribes that have been scattered to the winds, to all nations, which is a fulfillment of a prophecy made to Abraham that his seed would be the blessing of all nations, the esteem, the glory of all nations. They had to go out into the diaspora so that the roots to which the Gentiles could be grafted in would be all over the face of the earth. Therefore I shall gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them and shall bring them back to their fold. And they shall bear an increase, and I shall raise up shepherds over them, and they shall feed them. Sounds a lot like Jeremiah 3.15, doesn't it? And I shall raise up shepherds, pastors over you, who shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And they shall fear no more, nor be discouraged, nor shall they be lacking, declares Yahuwah. See that days are coming, declares Yahuwah, when I shall raise for David a branch of righteousness, and a king shall reign and act wisely, and shall do right ruling and righteousness in the earth. And in his day Judah shall be saved, and Israel dwell safely. And this is his name, whereby he shall be called Yahuwah our righteousness. This is a direct prophecy of Yeshua. Shall raise up a branch, raise up for David a branch of righteousness, and a king shall return, shall reign and act wisely, and shall do right ruling and righteousness. Luke 1 verse 6, blamelessly walking the commands of Yah on all the earth. Whereby his name shall be called Yahuwah, our righteousness. Let's look at John 15. John 15. Yeshua speaking, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. Every branch in me, every branch in me that bears no fruit, he takes away. I believe in Jesus, you're not bearing fruit, the Father shall take you away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes so that it bears more fruit. Oh, you believe and you do, and you are the hands and feet. You're doing good works, you're bearing fruit, you're still going to be pruned. A pruning process, the removal of the dead limbs on the branch is painful, but that's done so that you will bear more fruit, so that you will be more and more in line with the teachings of Yeshua, more and more a better servant of Yahuwah. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. The word, capital W, word. You are already clean because of the word, the Torah, without sin, because sin is transgression of the law, the word. First John 3, verse 4. <clears throat> stay in me, stay in Yeshua, and I stay in you. As the branch is unable to bear fruit of itself, you can't do, you can't do any good works, you can't bear any fruit on your own. Unless it stays in the vine, so neither are you unless you stay in me. All your good works, all your blessings, that's because of Yeshua, that's because of Yahuwah. Verse 5, I am the vine and you are the branches. He who stays in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. Because without me, you are able to do nothing. If anyone does not stay in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned separating the wheat from the chaff, the pruning, the sifting. Yeah, 
Sounds a lot like Revelation. If you stay in me and my words, words, Torah, stay in you, you shall ask whatever you wish. So if you stay in Yeshua and his words, his instruction, the Torah stays in you, you shall ask whatever you wish and it shall be done for you. In this, my father is esteemed that you bear much fruit and you shall be my taught ones. Why are you bearing fruit for the glory of Yah? He's esteemed by you. It creates an awesome witness when people see you and the way that you live and the way that you walk and the works that you do. And they say, I want some of that. What is that? Now you have an opportunity to glorify Elohim with your words, with your thoughts, with your heart, with your mind, with your hands. And you shall be the taught one of Yeshua, an apostle of Yeshua. As the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Stay in my love. What does that mean? If, if you guard my commands, you shall stay in my love. Even as I have guarded my Father's commands and stay in his love. Yeshua guarded his father's commands. Yeshua kept the Torah. If you love Yeshua, you stay in his love as he stayed in his father's love. He guarded his father's commands. You guard his commands. And if Yeshua is Yah made flesh, what are Yeshua's commands? Yah's commands. Malachi 3 verse 6, I'm the Lord Yahuwah Sabaoth, I change not. Yeshua Messiah, the same yesterday, today, and forever, in whom there is no shadow nor shift of turning. I change not. 1 Peter 2.21 For this you were called that Messiah, having suffered for your sins, that you might walk in his steps, that in him there is no sin. 1 John 3 verse 4 Lawlessness, nor was deceit found in his mouth. He did not say anything that went against the Torah. That being reviled being hated, did not revile in return, but committed himself to him who judges righteously, Yahuwah, who suffered upon the stake for your sins, your lawlessness, for you were like sheep who had gone astray, but have now returned to the shepherd, as we began this portion with, an overseer of your soul. If you guard my commands, you shall stay in my love even as I have guarded my Father's commands and stay in His love. These words I have spoken to you so that my joy might be in you and that your joy might be complete. Joy. Interesting. What is joy? Hmm. <laughs> Gosh, I need more thumbs. Proverbs 3. My son, do not forget my Torah, and let your heart watch over my commands. For length of day and long life and peace they add to you. Let not loving commitment and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck and write them on the tablet of your heart. Hebrews 8, Renewed Covenant. Thus finding favor and good insight in the eyes of Elohim and man. And whatever you ask shall be given unto you for the glory of my father, Yahuwah. Thus finding favor and good insight in the eyes of Yahuwah. Trust in Yahuwah with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Know him in all your ways. He makes all your paths straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear Yahuwah and turn away from evil. It is healing to your navel and moistening to your bones. Esteem Yahuwah with your goods and with your first fruits, with all your increase. Then your storehouses shall be filled with plenty, and your vats overflow with new wine. My son, do not despise the discipline of Yahuwah, and do not loathe his reproof. For whom Yahuwah loves, he reproves. He prunes the vines who bear fruit. For whom Yahuwah loves, he reproves. As a father, the son in whom he delights. 
Blessed is the man who has found wisdom and the man who gets understanding, for the gain from it is better than the gain from silver, and its increase than fine gold. She, wisdom, the Torah, is more precious than rubies, and all your delights are not comparable to her. Length of days is in her right hand, riches and esteem in her left hand. Her ways are pleasant ways, all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life, the Torah, grafted into the tree of life. She is a tree of life to those taking hold of her, the vine and the branches. She is a tree of life, and blessed are all those who retain her. The congruency of this word is incredible. So as you can see, Jeremiah 23 ties in with John chapter 15, which ties into Proverbs chapter 3. Back to John 15, 11. These words I have spoken to you so that my joy might be in you. My joy, the Torah, the blessings of life, and that your joy might be complete. This is my command, that you love one another as I have commanded you. No one has greater love than this, that one should lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. If you guard my commands, you shall stay in my love, even as I have guarded my Father's commands, kept the Torah, and stay in his love. And we know from Isaiah that our sins create a separation in between us and Yah, because sin is transgression of the law. So staying in his love is not transgressing the law. So back to Jeremiah 23, verse 7. Therefore, see the days are coming, coming, declares Yahuwah, when they shall say no more, as Yahuwah lives who brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Mitzrayim. This is a prophecy of the second exodus these days that are coming. But as Yahuwah lives who brought up and led the seed of the house of Israel, who? The seed of the house of Israel. Seed, trees, branches, fruit, vines. Gentile believers grafted into the tree of life. We just read about the tree of life, didn't we? It's the Torah. Gentile believers grafted into the tree of life. Romans 11, verse 16. What exactly was Shaul of Tarsus trying to tell us there, the apostle Paul? You are grafted in. But the root bears the branch. The branch does not bear the root. Remember the tree of life, the Torah. The tree of life is a euphemism for Israel. As Yahuwah lives, who brought up and led the seed of the house of Israel, us, out of the land of the north and from all the lands where I had driven them, the diaspora, the dispersion, us, and they shall dwell on their own soil, return to the land. My heart within me is broken because of the prophets. All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man and like a man overcome by wine because of Yahuwah and because of his set-apart words. For the land is filled with adulterers. For the land mourns because of a curse. The pastures of the wilderness are dried up and their course is evil and their might is not right. Both prophet and priest have become defiled. Even my house, my temple, Hakal, I have found their evil, declares Yahuwah. Therefore their way is to them like a slippery way in the dark. They are driven on and they shall fall on them. Their way is in darkness. Proverbs 6.23 The Torah is a light and the command is a lamp unto my feet. But their way is in darkness. Therefore their way is to them like a slippery way in the dark. They are driven on and shall fall on them. For I bring evil on them. The year of their punishment, declares Yahuwah. And I have seen folly in the prophets of Shomeron. This is the capital of the house of Israel. As compared to Jerusalem, the capital of the house of Judah. They prophesied by Baal, false god, and led my people, Israel, astray. How many people are prophesying by Baal, a false god, and not worshiping Elohim today, though they claim to believe in Yeshua, Messiah? And we're going to read Matthew 7, 21 in a moment, a little later on in this passage. And among the prophets of Jerusalem, I have seen a horrible matter, committing adultery and walking in falsehood. 
That word adultery is really important to this passage. You should underline it because it goes directly into the next couple of verses. Walking in adultery and walking in falsehood. And they strengthen the hands of evil ones so that no one turns back from his evil. And all of them are like Sodom to me and her inhabitants like Gomorrah, which got smoked for sexual impurity, immoral, immorality, adultery. Therefore, thus said Yahuwah of hosts concerning the prophets, See, I am making them eat wormwood and shall make them drink poisoned water for defilement has gone out into all the land of the prophets of Jerusalem. Now, verse 14, adultery and walking in falsehood. Verse 15, the implication of that, says Yahuwah, See, I am making them eat wormwood, and shall make them drink poisoned water, for defilement has gone out into all the land from the prophets of Jerusalem. Wormwood, bitter waters, adultery, Two cross-references here, one at the beginning of the book and one at the very end of the book. What does wormwood, poisoned water, have to do with adultery? Go to Numbers chapter 5. Numbers chapter 5. beginning at verse 11. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When any man's wife turns aside and is committed to trespass against him, we are the bride of Messiah, right? When any man's wife has committed a trespass against him and a man has intercourse with her, he whores, she whores, with a different man or a false god. Because idolatry is adultery. And a man has intercourse with her and is hidden from the eyes of her husband, Yeshua, and it is concealed that she has defiled herself, and there was no witness against her, nor was she caught, and a spirit of jealousy comes upon him, and he becomes jealous of his wife. Our Yah is a jealous Yah. How many times have you heard that? And he becomes jealous of his wife who has defiled herself, or spirit, spirit of jealousy comes upon him, and he becomes jealous of his wife, although she has not defiled herself. So there's a question here, has she? Then the man shall bring his wife to the priest, who's the high priest in the order of Melchizedek, according to the book of Hebrews, Yeshua. And he shall bring the offering for her, one-tenth of an ephah of barley flour. He is not to pour oil on it, because oil represents set-apartness, or put frankincense on it, because that is dedicated to Yah, because we don't know if we're dealing with an adulteress here. Because it is a grain offering of jealousy, an offering for remembering, for bringing crookedness to remembering, or perhaps a better word here is discovering. It's an offering for discovery, for bringing crookedness, sin, to discovery. And the priest shall bring her near and shall make her stand before Yahuwah. We're getting to the point here. And the priest shall take set-apart water in an earthen vessel, holy water, and take some of the dust that is on the floor of the dwelling place and put it into the water. <clears throat> this dust is the ash from the offering that is made. And the priest shall make the woman stand before Yahuwah and shall uncover the woman's head. The covering of the woman's head is symbolic, this covering that she has from her husband. And the priest uncovers her head and put the offering for remembering in her hands which is the grain offering of jealousy, while the priest holds in his hand the bitter water that brings a curse. And if you go on to read here, if she drinks the water, and nothing bad happens to her, she's innocent. But if she drinks the water, and she isn't innocent, she dies. And Yahuwah make you a curse and an oath among your people when Yahuwah makes your thigh waste away and your belly swell. And this water that causes the curse shall go into your inward parts and make your belly swell and your thigh waste away. And the woman shall say, Amen. And the priest shall write these curses in a book and shall wipe them off into the bitter water and shall make the woman drink the bitter water that brings the curse. And the water that brings the curse shall enter into her to become bitter.
and the woman shall become a curse among her people. This is this written in a book, and the priest shall write these curses in a book, and shall wipe them off into the bitter water. This is the Torah for adultery. What does this have to do with Revelation chapter 8? So keep a finger in Jeremiah 23, flip to Revelation chapter 8. Revelation chapter 8, verse 10. And the third messenger angel sounded, and a great star fell from the heaven, burning like a torch. Now remember, these are seals that are being opened. In other words, curses that have been written into a book, just like we just saw for adultery. And the third messenger sounded, and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the fountains of water. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And a third of the waters became wormwood, and many men died from the waters because they were made bitter because of their adultery, the bitter waters' adultery. So we go back to Jeremiah 23, verse 14. And among the prophets of Jerusalem I have seen a horrible matter, committing adultery and walking in falsehood. And they strengthen the hands of the evil ones so that no one turns back from me, turns back from his evil. All of them are like Sodom to me and her inhabitants like Gomorrah. Thus said Yahuwah of hosts concerning these prophets, committing adultery and walking in falsehood. Excuse me. See, I am making them eat wormwood and shall make them drink poisoned water. For defilement has gone out into all the land from the prophets of Jerusalem. They hoard against Yah. They were adulterous wives of the bridegroom. We need to remember that. Bitter waters. Thus said Yahuwah of hosts, do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you, they lead you astray. This is very applicable to us in big C modern day Christianity. They speak a vision of their own heart, not from the mouth of Yahuwah. They keep on saying to those who despise me, Yahuwah has said, you shall have peace. And to all who walk according to the stubbornness of their own heart, they say, no evil comes upon you. Those who are transgressing the words of Yah. Oh, you'll have peace, brother. Don't worry, no evil comes upon you. That was nailed to the cross. That was done away with. Negative. In fact, it, it bears a little bit of examination. Let's see if we can find Colossians. First 10, Thessalonians, Colossians 2, verse 14. The argument that it was nailed to the cross. Let's look at Colossians 2, 14. The law was nailed to the cross. Let's read this. Colossians 2, verse 14. We'll start in 13, because Paul, Shaul of Tarsus, loves run-on sentences. And you being dead in your trespasses, you being dead in your trespasses, your lawlessness, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he is made alive together with him, having forgiven all trespasses. Yeah. Yeshua's blood sacrifice removed the death sentence of your sin. Having blotted out that, was, that which was written by hand against us, not Yah's law, that which was written by hand against us, by the dogmas, religious bullcrap, which stood against us. Man's law, not Yah's law. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the stake. The dogmas were nailed to the stake. Having stripped the principalities and the authorities, he made a public display of them, having prevailed over them in it. Yeshua prevailed over the principalities and authorities, not over Yah's law. Let no one therefore judge you in eating or drinking or in respect of a festival or new moons or Sabbaths, which are a shadow of what to come, but the body of the Messiah. The point of this verse is let no one judge you if you are doing what you should be doing. 
in eating or drinking, which we saw in the previous video, Jeremiah 22, go read that, that Yeshua ate and drank, that the kings in the name, kings in the line of King David ate and drank. So let no one judge you in eating and drinking or in respect of a festival, keeping the feasts, the high holy days, Leviticus 23, eating, Leviticus 11, or the new moon or the Sabbath, keeping the Sabbath, which is the covenant, the wedding ring of Yahuwah. Do not be judged simply because these dogmas which stood against you were condemning you. Yeshua nailed those dogmas to the cross, to the stake. And so you are not to be judged for keeping Leviticus 11, eating clean, or for drinking, or in respect of a festival, Leviticus 23, or for keeping the Sabbath. All of these things are a shadow of what is to come. But the body of Messiah, we are the body of Messiah, and these are a shadow of what is to come. Read Revelation. It's full of temple imagery. That's why it's not taught in the church. Because as followers of Mashiach, we are to do these things because they are the Torah, and we are to walk in his steps, 1 Peter 2.21. And if there is no sin in Yeshua, that means 1 John 3, verse 4, there was no lawlessness in Yeshua, which means as we walk in Yeshua's steps, 1 Peter 2.21, there's not to be any lawlessness in us. The law is the Torah. Verse 18 of, of Colossians chapter 2. Let no one deprive you of the prize, one who takes delight in false humility and worship of angels, messengers, taking his stand on what he has not seen, puffed up by his own fleshly mind, and not holding fast to the head, Yeshua, from whom all the body, us, nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments, grows with the growth of Elohim, Yahuwah our Elohim. If then... You died with Messiah from the elementary matters of the world, these dogmas. Why, do you, why, as though living in the world, do you subject yourself to dogmas? Why are you doing religious bullcrap when it was clearly by the blood of Yeshua done away with? What was done away with was religious bullcrap, not the law. Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle, which are all to perish with use according to the commands and teachings of men. What was done away with was the commands and teachings of men, the dogmas, the doctrine, not the Torah. Back to Jeremiah 23, verse 17, these false prophets, they keep on saying to those who despise me, Yahuwah has said to you, you shall have peace, false teaching. And to all who walk according to the stubbornness of their own heart, doing their own things, doctrines and dogmas, they say, no, no evil comes upon you. Mm. Well, again, we will examine Matthew 7, 21 in a moment. For who has stood in the counsel of Yahuwah and has seen and heard his word? Who has listened to his word and obeyed it? His word. What's his word? The commands the law, the Torah. See, a storm of Yahuwah shall go forth in a rage, a whirling storm, it whirls on the head of the wrong. The displeasure of Yahuwah shall not turn back until he has done and established the purpose of his heart. In the latter days, you shall understand it perfectly. It'll all, it'll all make sense in the latter days, end times. Oh, snap. I guess we should have been doing those things that he told us to do. In end times, in the latter days, you shall understand it perfectly. A couple of proof texts for that. Let's go to Revelation 14, verse 12, real quick. Revelation 14, verse 12. Here is the endurance of the set-apart ones, the saints. Here are those guarding the commands of Elohim and the belief of Yeshua Messiah. How about Revelation 12, 17, second witness. And the dragon was enraged with the woman, the remnant of the assembly. I dare not say the church because the church is lawless. We know from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 that the lawless one is the Antichrist and that lawlessness, breaking the Torah, is the working of Satan, said Paul in the New Testament, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And the dragon was enraged with the woman, the remnant of the assembly, and he went to fight with the remnant of her seed, those guarding the commands of Elohim and possessing the witness of Yeshua Messiah.
Jeremiah 23, 20, the displeasure of Yahweh shall not turn back and he held, until he has done and established the purposes of his heart. In the latter days, you shall understand it perfectly. I did not send these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, they would have let my people hear my words. If they were of Yah, they would have let his people hear his words, the Torah. And they would have turned from their evil ways and from the evil of their deeds. So you see the inverse here? You see the implication? Torah, good. Your way, bad. Am I an Elohim close by, declares Yahuwah, and not an Elohim far off? If anyone is hidden in secret places, would I not see him, declares Yahuwah? Do I not fill the heavens and the earth, declares Yahuwah? What I have heard, I have heard what the prophets have said, who prophesy falsehood in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. Prophesied falsehood. Let's see here. Can he find it? James, Peter, Hebrews, Timothy, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, falsehood, how about verse 8, now we'll start at 3. We'll start at one for context. As to the coming of our master, Yeshua Messiah, who wrote this, Shaul and Silas and Timothy to the assembly of the, Thess of the Thessalonians in Elohim our father and the master Yeshua Messiah, Paul, the apostle Paul, Shaul of Tarsus. As to the coming of our master, Yeshua Messiah, and our gathering together to him, we ask you, brothers, not to become easily unsettled in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if it is from us, as if the day of Yahuwah has come. Let no one deceive you in any way, because the falling away is to come first, and the man of lawlessness, lawlessness, Torahlessness, is to be revealed, the son of destruction. So... If you go to a church where they're preaching a lawless Jesus, that is not biblical. The lawless Jesus, let's just say it, is the Antichrist, the son of destruction. And this is why so many people will be deceived when the false prophet returns. They will think, oh, Jesus has come back. Jesus was never against the Torah. He was the Torah made flesh, the word made flesh. Let no one deceive you in any way because the falling away is to come first and the man of lawlessness is to be revealed, the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called Elohim or, the, or that is worshipped so that he sits as Elohim, he sits as God in the dwelling place, the temple of God, showing himself that he is God, the Antichrist, the son of destruction, the man of lawlessness. You cannot have a lawless biblical Messiah. You can have a lawless biblical Antichrist, but not a lawless biblical Messiah. This is from the mouth of Paul in the New Testament, by the way. Do you not remember that I told you while I was still with you? And now you know it restrains for him to be revealed in this time. For the secret of lawlessness, Torahlessness, is already at work, only until he who now restrains comes out of the midst. And then the lawless one shall be revealed, whom the master shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. So the lawless one and the master cannot be the same person. And we know from 1 1, 2 Thessalonians 1 chapter 1, that the master is Yeshua Messiah. So Yeshua is not the lawless one. Jesus is not the lawless one. Then the lawless one shall be revealed, whom the master, Yeshua, shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and bring to naught with the manifestation of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan. Let me repeat that. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power and sign and wonders of falsehood. 
falsehood was that word that we were looking for here that ties it back to Jeremiah. But perhaps we'll finish a little bit of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power and signs and wonders of falsehood and with all deceit of unrighteousness. Deceit of unrighteousness. Well, righteousness is blamelessly walking in the commands of Yah, according to the New Testament, Luke chapter 1, verse 6. The deceit of unrighteousness, the trick, the lie, the untruth of unrighteousness in those perishing because they did not receive the love of the truth in order for them to be saved. The unrighteous will not be saved because the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, who is opposed to the master Yeshua. The lawless one is not Yeshua. The lawless one is not the master. They cannot be according to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8. There's the lawless one, working of Satan, and then there's the master, Yeshua Messiah. They're not the same person. And the idea that they are the same person is the deceit of unrighteousness and falsehood according to Paul in the New Testament. And for this reason, Elohim sends them a working delusion for them to believe the falsehood in order that all should be judged who did not believe in the truth but have delighted in unrighteousness. There's that falsehood again. Jeremiah 23, 25. I've heard what the prophets have said who prophesy falsehood in my name. We're under the new covenant. We're covered by grace. We don't have to keep the law. Falsehood. Lawlessness is the working of Satan. I have heard what the prophets said who have prophesied falsehood in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed, till when shall it be in the heart of the prophets, the prophets of falsehood and the prophets of deceit, there's that word again, in their own heart, who try to make my people forget my name, Yahuwah, by their dreams which everyone relates to his neighbor as their fathers forgot my name for Baal. The prophet who has a dream, let him relate the dream, and he who has my word, let him speak my word in truth. My word, my Torah. Every time you see my word before the New Testament, it meant Torah. It never stopped meaning Torah in the New Testament. It's just been twisted by false prophets. Yeshua is the word made, made flesh. Matthew 5, 17, I come not to destroy the Torah or the prophets, but to complete it. Play ra'u, to be it. For truly, truly, I say unto you, till heaven and earth passes away, not one jot, not one yod, not one tittle shall fall from the Torah till all be done. That's what Yeshua says in the Gospel of Matthew in the New Testament. The prophet who has a dream, let him relate the dream, and he who has my word, let him speak my word in truth. What is the chaff to the wheat, declares Yahuwah. Separating the wheat from the chaff, the threshing, the sifting, the wheat that has value and the chaff that doesn't. Is not my word like a fire, declares Yahuwah, and like a hammer that shatters a rock? Therefore, see, I am against the prophets, declares Yahuwah, who steal my words, every one from his neighbor, who steal my words. These false prophets, be careful. Be careful who you listen to. And again, never take my word for it. Read it with your own eyes. See it. Understand it. Hear it with your own ears. Let your heart be filled up with this word of Yah. Don't take my word for it. Don't take anybody's word for it. Pastor, priest, rabbi, bishop, elder, brother, father. No. See, I am against the prophets, declares Yahuwah, who use their tongues and say, He declares. See, I am against those who prophesy false dreams, declares Yahuwah, and relates them, and lead my people astray by their falsehoods and by their reckless boasting. But I myself did not send them, nor have I commanded them. And they do not profit this people at all. 
declares Yahuwah. When these people, or the prophet or the priest, ask you, saying, What is the message of Yahuwah? Then you shall say to them, What message? I shall forsake you, declares Yahuwah. As for the prophet and the priest and the people who say the message of Yahuwah, I shall punish that man in his house, those prophesying falsely. This is what each one says to his neighbor and each one to his brother. What has Yahuwah answered and what has Yahuwah spoken? But the message of Yahuwah you no longer remember. For every man's message is his own word. For you have changed the words of the living Elohim. Yahuwah of hosts are Elohim. For every man's message is his own word. For you have changed the words of the living Elohim. That hits like a ton of bricks. This is what you say to the prophet. What has Yahuwah answered you and what has Yahuwah spoken? But since you say the message of Yahuwah, therefore thus said Yahuwah. Do not take the Lord's name in vain. Do not put his stamp of approval on your BS. Because you say this word, the message of Yahuwah, and I have sent to you saying, do not say the message of Yahuwah. Therefore see, I, I shall utterly forget you and cast you away from my presence along with the city that I gave you and your fathers, and I shall put an everlasting reproach on you and an everlasting shame that is not forgotten. I shall utterly forget you and cast you away from my presence. And now, for the bow that we will tie on the top of this, Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, from the mouth of Yeshua. Yeshua speaking. Not everyone who says to me, Master, Master, not everyone who claims Yeshua is Messiah shall enter into the kingdom of the heavens, but he who is doing the desire of my Father, Yahuwah, in the heavens. Many shall say to me in that day, Master, Master, have we not prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and done many mighty works in your name? And then I shall declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who work lawlessness. Get away from me, you Torahless people, you who work lawlessness. Just because you claimed Yeshua as Messiah doesn't mean he claims you. I never knew you. Then I shall declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who work lawlessness. Therefore, see, I shall utterly forget you and cast you away from my presence. For every man's message is his own word, for you have changed the words of the living Elohim. Matt, it's Jeremiah 23. Bless y'all. Shalom.